Hi everyone, this is the first video I'm doing for my Final Fantasy X Challenge playthrough, which is a Tidus only, own sphere grid, no customised, no overdrives challenge. Um, it's definitely one of the more interesting playthroughs I've ever done. I've done the, um, obviously just the normal playthrough. I did a normal Tidus only playthrough a long time ago, um, and I've also done no sphere grid, no summons, no overdrive challenge. Uh, but this one's been really really interesting um, essentially the idea of it was to get as far as I could do as many bosses as I could just using Tidus' section of the sphere grid um, like filling out as many nodes as I could farming some spheres to increase his stats um, what I managed with that was I completed the story that was that wasn't that wasn't too hard honestly um, which I have recorded, but I haven't recorded any commentary for. If anyone would be interested, I could do some like post commentary over that and upload videos of that, just to talk about obviously things I've done for the story bosses, how I've prepared for the story bosses in advance, and that sort of thing. Um, there's even some stuff in there about like preparing for all this end game stuff by making sure I get like the extra HP spheres and strength spheres that you can get throughout the run and sort of making sure I get every advantage I can for this point. Um, so yeah, I managed the all the story bosses. Uh, Ultima Weapon. Some of the area and species creations. I can't remember exactly which ones I did. I did do a post about the uh, arena monsters that I have beaten. So I'll link to that in the description. And there's information on there like about how I beat them, what preparations I did, that sort of thing. Um, but at this point, I have expanded the conditions slightly because I'd reached a, I'd reached a peak, basically. I couldn't beat any more bosses because I didn't have enough HP, I didn't have enough strength, didn't have enough defense, and I couldn't get any more because I couldn't kill the monsters that I needed to kill to get those spheres. Um, so what I did, was expanded the own sphere grid uh, restriction slightly to go into Auron's section of the grid. So you can see I've gone all the way through Tidus' grid and then branched out into Auron's grid and filled out his grid as well. Um, and then the idea now is to see how much I can do with, with access to this much of the sphere grid <laughs> and then potentially expand out again. What I'll most likely do before I start expanding into other people's sections of the grid is just go around and get certain abilities. You can see already down here. It's the only node I've activated all the way down here for bribe. Because for a lot of this stuff you need a lot of X potions and the only way to reliably farm X potions is to bribe the Valahas in the Cavern of the Stolen Faith. Um, what, what I might sort of allow next once I've again hit a peak of what I can actually do is don't know where it actually is at the moment uh, yeah I don't know where it is but dispel and potentially auto life there's auto life um, because there's just going to be bosses that I simply can't beat because I don't have dispel anything that inflicts armor break I can't get rid of it so I can't survive anything so any boss that does that, I, I can't beat, no matter how much I optimise these stats. Um, and then obviously there's bosses that, like Nemesis, deal fixed damage that's well over the damage limit, uh, the HP limit. So I can't survive those attacks. So then someone like Auto Life would be needed for that. Even then, I'm not convinced I could do those battles, because you'd have to, obviously, Auto Life which is a slow, slow move, and then you revive, and I'd have to apply all the buffs again, so I'm not convinced that would work, but I'll obviously give it a try when I get there. Um, other thing you might notice is I've got two luck nodes that aren't activated. Uh, they're the only parts of the sphere grid I have access to that I haven't activated. Um, that's because they're only luck plus one, and obviously I don't have the fortune spheres to do it, but that's what I'm going to be getting in this video, I'm going to be taking on Earth Eater for the first time. 
So I'm going to be making a start on the original creations and seeing which of those I can beat. And then potentially trying Dark Bellafor once I have mm, maybe two luck plus four nodes. Jump my luck up to 42. I'll give it a go then and hopefully I can do it because with Valifor, again, he has one of those moves that does fixed damage for well above the HP limit. But he only has, I think, 800,000 HP. So he should be fairly quick. If I can just get enough attacks in before he does it, should be fine. Um, at that point, if I can beat him, then I want to farm him for a ribbon armor. Ideally, a ribbon and auto regen armor. Depending on how easy it is to beat him, that, well, I'll just have to see how I feel about that and whether I want to do it. But I did a lot of farming for equipment just in the story playthrough and like preparing for bosses way ahead of time. So, you know, I've gotten used to that. I spent a long time farming the agility spheres from Fenrir when I was still in Tidus' section of the grid. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um,. I think that's really it. Just in terms of the stats, um, obviously agility is at 170, which is as much agility as you need because um, I, I think most Final Fantasy 10 players know, but anything above 170 agility just affects when you'll get your first turn. Um, so if you have a first strike weapon equipped, you'll always get the first turn, so you don't need above 170 agility. Uh, the HP, I've only got enough nodes on the grid to get to 9,999. If I were to remove one of these nodes, it would drop his HP down to 9,800 and something. So only enough of those that I have maximum HP. Uh, the defense is high enough that I can survive uh, Earth Eater's Megaton punch counter attack. Um, and the magic defense technically isn't high enough to survive the flare he uses which is really really powerful it only does you only see 9999 damage on screen because it can't break damage limit but it does it is really powerful need quite a lot of magic defense to survive it but that's solved by the equipment obviously i'll start with sonic steel and then switch to kalbolg after cast in haste um for armor i won't, won't be using that i want Deathproof armor, which I have a lot of from farming Femria for the agility spheres. And then once he's on his back and he's using Flare, I've got this magic defense plus 20, plus 10, plus 5 percent shield, which takes my magic defense up just high enough to survive it. I think I can survive it every time, but I haven't really seen him use it enough to know whether perhaps random variants could kill me. Um, I'll just have to see about that, and if it does, I'll have to maybe clear a couple of um, these like low accuracy nodes off to bump magic defense up just a little bit more. Um, but yeah, once I can beat Earth Eater, uh, I shouldn't have a problem beating Greater Sphere because I think having this magic defense means that I can survive Greater Sphere's Ultima, so that shouldn't be a problem either. So I can farm up a load of Lux Spheres and Fortune Spheres. I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to need. I haven't done the calculations on it. I don't know if there's going to be space. Um, obviously, once I do start putting luck nodes down, I can start getting rid of these accuracy nodes because I won't need them. And probably trim MP down a bit. Yeah, that's most likely what I'll do. Um, but again, I'll just have to see about that when I get there. So, yeah, Deathproof Shield, first strike. Let's take on Earthia. Oh, you make a potion. I'm imagining that should be enough X potions. <laughs> really, really disappointed if it isn't. Okay, so you can still get unlucky on like uh, Earthia's first move on this fight. Because if he uses Graviton Punch, uh, Megaton Punch, and hits Tidus with it. Tidus survives, and that means he does another one. Because if he hits someone with that and they survive, he'll always do another one. So if he hits Tidus with two of them, that kills Tidus. 
So you have to get lucky and have him either only hit tires with one or hit one of the other characters or have him just use his normal normal attack. I think I have to defend to survive his normal attack though, so I will do that before his move. Oh, maybe not. Maybe we should make him that up. Um, right, so that's five cheers. Just for a mega potion. Um, it should only take one attack for knocking on his back now because he's had a counter attack. There we go. Remember to switch to the magic defense armor. That's something I'm going to forget to do a lot. Um, the flare also hits a random person, so you can get a few extra hits in if he just takes out the other two. Because I mean, they haven't had a chance to escape yet. Right, let's hit Titus. Let's get Riku out of here. Okay. So yeah, this is this is pretty much going to be a fight. Just attack, heal, attack, heal, attack, heal. Switch armors when he gets back up and when he falls on his back. Um, I think I should be able to knock him, knock him back over fairly easily after he falls down. Uh, after he gets back up, sorry. But I haven't actually tested that yet. But only it should only take two. Attacks three maximum, depending on the damage rolls. So I should be able to get him because he he uses one of his turns to stand up. So it'll be yeah. So I get like four turns, five turns between those his turns. And if I'm using quick kit, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, the only thing I'm worried about with having to, if I do have to cut down on MP, is obviously that that means more, uh, less quick hits before I have to use an ether or a, a turbo ether or rock an elixir. That could be annoying, but hopefully it works all right. I think he's going to stand up on this coming turn. Need to remember to switch armors. I'm still very worried about that random variants killing me. Looks very much like it could. Um, uh, death proof. Okay, so quick hit. Yeah, there we go. Not too bad. Switch back to the magic defense armor. So the I'd say I thought at first the hardest part of this challenge would be no overdrives because when I did just a normal Titus challenge before, you use overdrives so much because they do so much damage. But really, the oh there we go, that was actually quite quick. Didn't expect that. Um, but the no customizer has been so much harder because it involves so much farming for equipment for late boss fights and especially in this oh, dark matters really that's the that is the worst thing I've found in this challenge is getting dark matters is so annoying because I've literally got no use for them you see I've got 10 already I got I had 99 from farming everything a little while ago and already sold them all. Um, so yeah, the no customized thing has definitely been the hardest part. Because it just means any armor that I need, I have to farm it. I have to figure out. I've used the wiki a lot and um, a website called FFX Index, I think it's called, um, which has loads of information about what enemies drop what and like, the chances of them dropping equipment and all that sort of thing. Uh, the FFX index, I found there's been some stuff that hasn't quite been right, like it lists Fenrir as being able to drop Confuse Proof armor, which he can't. The only enemy that can drop that is uh, the Arryman, I think it is, from the Omega Dungeon, Omega Ruins. Um, so that's the only way to get Confuse Proof. So basically, until I get Ribbon from a Dark Aeon. 
I have to do so much switching armor around because this is the closest I've got to a, like a ribbon armor is these sort of death proof, poison proof, sleep proof, slow proof that I've got from Fenrir. So farming these for like specific enemies, specific bosses, that's definitely been the hardest part. Um, like this one, I had to farm uh, Geoscano, if that's how you pronounce it, I think it is, which is the the big undead fish thing that you see right at the beginning of the game, but you go back to Barge Temple and fight later. He can drop water reflect. So I had to farm him, that took me about two hours because he just kept dropping weapons for Riku and Waka, which is really, really annoying. But eventually I got it, and that is quite handy. I used it for... Um, no, I didn't. I was going to say I used it for Ultima Weapon, but I didn't actually have this at the time. But yeah, that would be very useful for Ultima Weapon because it can reflect his uh, like Confuse and Sleep and Break and stuff. Um, but yeah, farming up all these armors to have the have the right stuff to beat certain bosses has been sort of the most. It's been the hardest part. But it's also been the most interesting part, trying to figure out where to get these armors and what I need for them and that sort of thing. But yeah, um, that, that's pretty much it for this one. So I've got the got Earth Eater, so I can definitely farm him now, which is nice. So I'll probably do that for a bit after I see if I can kill kill Greater Sphere as well. I'll do a video of that as well, um, just to keep you up to date on what bosses I've killed, what bosses I can kill. Um, but yeah, uh, if anyone is interested to see like the recordings I've made of the uh, like story playthrough, I can do commentary over that and just talk about talk about all of that. This is some definitely, it's definitely some interesting stuff in there. Um, yeah. Anyway, next up will be Greater Sphere. I'll see you in that video.